Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypertensive crisis. So before we get started, guys, you know I'm about to ask you to do, so please help me out. Like this video. You know you're going to love it. Like it now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started. Look at what it says, hypertensive crisis. And I wrote here because I want to remind you guys, this is a medical emergency if a patient has hypertensive crisis. Now, this is a term that's used to indicate either a hypertensive urgency or emergency, guess what? Both of those are bad. Hypertensive crisis occurs when the systolic blood pressure is higher than 180 and or the diastolic blood pressure is greater than 110. Remember the systolic, that's the top number. The diastolic is the bottom number. Blood pressures can often be greater than 220 over 140. The difference between hypertensive urgency and emergency is the absence or presence of target organ damage, those important organs. So look at this, hypertensive urgency. This develops over hours to days and it does not have clinical evidence of target organ disease. So there's no evidence that the organ's been damaged, right? But hypertensive emergency has target um, organ disease and most often requires hospitalization for prompt controlled reduction of blood pressure. Hypertensive crisis. It occurs more often in patients with a history of hypertension who have not adhered to their drug regimens or who've been under medicated. So this patient has hypertension. They either have not been taking their meds the way they're supposed to, <coughs> excuse me, or they have been taking their meds the way they're supposed to, but the dosage has been too low. And so it it has not been enough to maintain that patient at the target blood pressure range that they're supposed to be in. Clinical manifestations. A hypertensive emergency is often manifested as hypertensive encephalopathy. This is a syndrome. When you see that word syndrome, guys, all that means, that's a fancy term for a cluster of signs and symptoms that lead to something, okay? So um, the hypertensive encephalopathy, this is a syndrome, a cluster of signs and symptoms in which a sudden rise in blood pressure is associated with severe headache, nausea, vomiting, seizures, confusion, and coma. Look at the causes. The ones that I um, highlighted are the ones that tend to show up the most on your nursing exams if you get a question on it. And the one I put a star next to, that's the one that tends to show up on NCLEX the most if, they tend to, if they're asking about the hypertensive crisis. So make sure you know it. I don't write these exams, guys. All right. Cause of a hypertensive crisis, exacerbation of chronic hypertension. Remember, most of the people who go through this, they all have already been diagnosed with hypertension. They and they um, either haven't been taking their medications, they haven't been compliant, or they have been compliant, their dosage has just been too low, right? What else can cause it? Patient could be in preeclampsia, going to eclampsia, having seizures, drugs, this is important, cocaine, amphetamines, that's, that can cause hypertensive crisis. MAOIs, and this has been seen on NCLEX many times. MAOIs, guys, this is a, a drug class of medication for uh, depression. You need to know them. Look what it says. MAOIs taken with tyramine containing foods. When the patient is taking an MAOI, they cannot take anything that has tyramine in it. No, you know, smoked sausage, no salami, no pepperoni, no beer. Make sure you know the list of tyramine containing foods. The patient has to stay away because that can throw them into a hypertensive crisis. Okay. I did a video on that. So if you want to know, go. it's in my pharmacology playlist for antidepressant, antidepressants. I did a video on the MAOIs and I go over that. Moving on. Patient assessment is extremely important. You're going to monitor for neurological deficits, retinal damage, heart failure, pulmonary edema, renal failure. The neurological changes are often similar to that of a person who had a stroke. Nursing management, hypertensive emergencies require hospitalization, IV administration of antihypertensives. And the reason why it's given IV, guys, 
we need this to start working right away because we don't want that patient to have a stroke. We don't want that patient to go into coma. We don't want that patient to die. And remember the intravenous route, that's the route that the medication will be absorbed the quickest. So they're going to get an IV and they're going to be in the ICU. When treating hypertensive emergencies, the mean arterial pressure, that's the map, is often used instead of blood pressure readings to guide and evaluate therapy. So to let us know if this patient's getting better or not and what the next treatment option is going to be. And they show you how the map is calculated. I really don't see too many questions asking you how to calculate it. Just know that that map is used. IV drugs for hypertensive emergencies include, Professor D, do I have to know what drugs are going to um, are expected? Yes, you do. I'm so sorry. Don't shoot the messenger. Here we go. The vasodilators such as your nitro nitroprusside, guys, I can't pronounce, um, your adrenergic inhibitors, all of these guys, your um, labetalol, calcium channel blockers, sodium nitroprusside is the most, and you see a highlight in pink because you need to know that, guys. It is the most effective IV drug to treat hypertensive emergencies. This is the drug you expect to see ordered first. Drug alert for libidolol. By the way, that's a beta blocker. You're going to instruct the patient not to discontinue the drug abruptly. Discontinuing that drug abruptly can cause them, can cause like a rebound hypertension, can make the blood pressure go high. That's number one. And number two, that can throw the patient into seizures. So teach them to never DC de de that drug abruptly. And abrupt cessation may precipitate angina or heart failure. You have to teach that to that patient. If you tell the patient not to do something without telling them why, they're more not more likely to be compliant. But when you explain to them the reason why you're telling them to do or not to do something and what may happen, they're more likely to be compliant. Antihypertensive drugs given IV have a rapid Within seconds, I just told you that anything that's given IV, it's going to work immediately, guys. It's going directly to vessels. Antihypertensive drugs get, um, given IV have a rapid within seconds to minutes onset of action. So you have to assess the patient's blood pressure and heart rate every two to three minutes during the initial administration of these drugs. Because the thing is, even though they're in a hypertensive crisis, you don't want to throw them all the way on the other end of the spectrum. And now you're throwing this patient in a shock, right? Their blood pressure has gone down too low. So you really have to keep a, an eye on that blood pressure and the heart rate. Why? We need to make sure that the target organs, that those tissues are still being perfused adequately. Use extreme caution in treating the patient with coronary artery disease or cerebral vascular disease. You're going to measure the urine output to assess renal perfusion. Why the urine output? Well, because the kidneys are the first ones to shut down if that patient's not being perfused adequately. So that kidney function, the urine output tells you a lot. Patients are um, supposed to have at least 30 mLs per hour. And you start to see that output go down and down and down. Something's wrong. That patient's not being perfused the way, the way that they're supposed to. So you're going to keep an eye on the urine output. You're going to keep an eye on the BUN. You're going to keep an eye on the um, creatinine. Patient may be on bed rest. Frequent neurological checks. You're going to check their level of consciousness, their pupillary size and reaction, movement of extremities. Hypertensive urgencies usually do not require IV drugs, but can be managed with oral agents. And remember, the our urgency is when there's no evidence of target organ damage. The oral drugs most frequently used for hypertensive urgencies are captopril, labetalol, clonidine, and, and amlodipine. The disadvantages of the oral drugs is the inability to regulate the dosage the mo from moment to moment, as you can do with IV drugs. Drug alert for um, clonidine, which is a catapress. You're going to teach a patient to change position slowly. Why? This drug lowers the blood pressure. We don't want to cause what? Orthostatic hypotension. Hazardous activities should be avoided since the drug can cause drowsiness. So this is not a medication to take and then try to drive your car anywhere. Drugs should not be stopped abruptly as it can cause what? Rebound hypertension. And I talked to you guys about that earlier. And guys, that is your hypertensive crisis in a nutshell. Please let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. And guys, I promise you, I have a running list of all of your requests. So if I haven't gotten to it yet, I promise I will, but I'm only one person. I can only do so much in a day. But 
I promise I'm going to get to it. Um, let me know what you'd like to see me cover more extensively. Don't forget I have audio lessons available on my website for you, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys should check me out on my other social media platforms. I cover lots of different nursing questions on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys will catch me on the next video.